Rockin' Country Radio, today's hottest country and more. Well, good evening and welcome to Rockin' Country Radio. I am your host, DJ Delta Dawn, and I'm very glad to be here with you on your Tuesday night. And uh, I hope wherever you are this evening, you are safe and your weather where you are is is behaving because um, I was seeing a little bit earlier where pretty much most of the country this evening and tonight um, has a real, real high threat of severe thunderstorms because of the fronts coming through. I know through North Carolina we've already been hammered today and we're expecting some more as the evening goes on and uh, they've been pretty bad. So I hope wherever you are you're safe and all is well. I want to welcome you all to our program and I uh, want to thank you for being here and if you're brand new to our program welcome aboard. We're glad to have you here as well and certainly appreciate you giving us a, a try for the first time and I tell you we love doing this show and the reason why we do is because of guests like we have tonight. Um he is a true Texan. I was talking to him a little bit before we went live, and I love, love, love his accent, as you are going to get to experience in just a few moments. Um, you know, for Texas is just – the rich history of Texas is, is awesome. And, um, you know, out of it comes some of the best people, in my opinion. And our guest tonight is is – Definitely a testament to that. He grew up in a small farm in Van Alstine, Texas, and um, he has kind of had music and writing and singing in his blood since the very beginning. And needless to say, he has gone on to do some amazing things. He performed over in Branson, Missouri for a little while. And... um, it, while there, he was awarded the Male Newcomer of the Year and Duo of the Year with Lori Locke. And then after about 1,200 shows, he decided to venture over to a little town called Nashville, Tennessee, um, which is not so little. Um, but in any event, he did some amazing things over there. But his his career has taken on many, many twists and turns, and he still, through it all, um, after taking some time away, has found his kind of his his voice again and has just decided this is his real passion and he is back in the studio he's making great music we've got a, a couple great songs we're going to play before we wrap our show this evening he's put out a wonderful video to one of the songs which um if you haven't seen it all i can just all i can say to give you a hint without giving anything away is maxim chirkowski i can never say his last name but dancing with the stars this year's winner Okay, that's all I'm going to say. We'll let him tell you about it. But tonight we are so very excited and proud and honored to welcome to our show Mr. Stacy Burke. Hello, Stacy. Well, how do you do? Sure appreciate <laughs> I you having love me. it. I love it. Well, howdy do to you too. And it is so nice to have you with us this evening. Um, thank you so much. It is an honor to have you. Well, thank you. Well, you know, as I was saying in the intro, you have you have had quite the career. I mean, musically, apart from music, you have done some uh, tremendous things, and and have really made an impact in the lives of young people. I mean, you've you've kind of done a little bit of everything, and now you're you're back to writing and singing and uh, making videos and and kind of doing what you are the most passionate about. And uh, I guess, first of all, I just want to congratulate you on, on how things have kind of come full circle for you. Well, it, it it's definitely been an adventure. And, uh, you know, this is something you can't, um, you know, take lightly. It's, uh, it's kind of a lifelong thing. You have to live and breathe it. Competition is so tough out there. But, you know, it's just something that I think it, Whatever you have in your heart, I think it's just important that you you do it and do it with all you have. You know, I think it um, it's the only way it becomes a blessing to others. Um, I'm just thankful to be able to do it and want to keep doing it if, if I can. And so. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I I had read somewhere and and it's so true what you say is that you know the saying goes that if if you're doing what you love you'll never work a day in your life and and that could not be a truer statement because 
right. when you're when you're doing what you love, you're putting everything you have into it, and it's a passion, and and it never feels like work because it's always fun. That's not to say there aren't challenges, but at least you you kind of just know that you're doing exactly what you were put on this earth to do. And and I read something very interesting about you, Stacey. Um, you had for a time worked with the Boys and Girls Ranch, and um which I know was an experience in itself working with those young people. And, and I had read that you had kind of impressed upon these young men and women to follow your dreams. And you had it at that point in time, you kind of came to the realization that you were doling out this wonderful advice, but you were not even following it yourself. And that was, Hey, you know, um, and I think that is just awesome that you, made that difference in it's no telling how many young people's lives but how talk a little bit about that how did you get into um working with youth at the boys and girls ranch well i, I have a degree in at, um, equestrian science and i helped train horses and grew up you know with horses and um i had an opportunity to use that to to help the kids out there at the boys and girls ranch and um, I just had a blast with them. I mean, I, I went there to help them, but they really helped me. They mm-hmm. they were just such a blessing and so fun to work with. And and um, but you know, like you said, they ended up teaching me and opened up my, my eyes to the you know how important it is to go. Seek your dream, you know, that what God put in your heart is so important to go after that and with all your heart. Otherwise, you end up with regrets. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I've been living with this regret for many years, and it just gnaws on you uh, like none other. And, I, you know, I just I don't want to go out in my life with that regret. And yeah. so that those children help see how important it is because, you know, what kind of witness was I if I wasn't doing mine? And uh, and so now they've just been encouraging me ever since. They're so excited. And, of course, they, you know, I keep in touch with them, and they see the ups and downs. I mean, it's not uh, just all this, you know, easy thing. You just go after the limelight. I mean, it, it's tough. It's tough with anything mm-hmm. in life. And, oh, yeah. But if you don't do it, you'll never know. And it's so important to give it your all. So you can know and and just do what God blessed you to do. Yeah, that that is very true, and you know, and and I think sometimes if we have such a defined idea of of how we want our lives to be or what we want to do with our lives, and and we get derailed sometimes, or sometimes our lives take paths that we weren't expecting, but ultimately along the way we we learn, you know, and it. it Definitely sounds like your experience with the Boys and Girls Ranch was was not for naught. It was it was a blessing for you, and it kind of helped, kind of guide you and and uh, put you back on track of of to follow and pursue your dreams that you had from the very beginning, which I I think is just outstanding. And you know you've you've done some incredible things, Stacey. I mean, as I was you know kind of preparing for the interview and also just learning about you as a person, it's amazing the things that you've done because I mean. Uh, it's it's no small feat to go over to Branson, Missouri, and play and perform over there, to the magnitude that you did. I mean, that's you know that's one of those things that you know a select few get to do, which is a wonderful experience. And talk a little about that because that was pretty early in your music career that you were able to go and do that. Yeah, I just kind of fell into that. Um, I was. Oh, I was hired as a waiter there in a restaurant there at Silver Dollar City, and uh, they I started playing, bringing my guitar to work and started playing it, and the waitresses just loved it, and they allowed me to go out there and, you know, start singing to the people that would come in and set me. And so I started doing that, and um, <clears throat> the the people that were over, the, the music, you know, there at Silver Dollar City came in and sat, and I, you know, serenaded them while they were right there eating, and they just instantly signed me up, and, and I, next thing I knew, I was singing in front of 4,000 people every night down there in Echo Hollow, and it was just a blast. It was a great way to, you know, really get things going, and I, I 
I went from just, you know, entertaining a couple of people in, you know, a, a booth here and there to all these thousands of people every night. So I was, I was very excited about that. So, yeah. <laughs> and all I can think as you're sharing that story is had you never pulled out your guitar that first time and played, you know, you may not have ever gotten that opportunity, but obviously um, people recognized that you had immense talent and that you needed to be doing more than waiting tables, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I was, <laughs> as something just, you know, got me to where I knew I had to do it, and, and uh, it's right. You have to overcome those fears. And yeah. you got to take chances in life. That's very important. Mm-hmm. For sure. Right. Now, I have to talk to you about your song, your latest release, because for one thing, I love the video. It, it was so well done, and not just because Maxim is in it. I mean, it's a great video all the way around, but Till Your Boots Are Dirty. Um, kind of talk about the background to that song and how the whole video and having Maxim become a part of it, how did that all kind of materialize? Well, um, when I went to Nashville, I met a songwriter named John Ray. And uh, he just kind of took me under his wing, and, and uh, he's a great guy. And he's friends with um, Dave West, which is in L.A., and he worked on Dance, Dancing with the Stars. Mm-hmm. He uh, did the video production there, and uh, he played Till Your Boots Are Dirty for Dave West, and... He loved it, and so he had this idea, you know, to to share it with Max and, you know, see if he wanted to be involved, you know, which would help get views. And uh, so he played for Max, and Max, first words out of his mouth was, I'm in. Whatever it is, I'm in. Oh, wow. And so we, uh, you know, flew out there, and we started working together. And, um, <clears throat> you know, we, Dave and I kind of, come up with the story for the the video and, and you know one thing just led to the other and he, he was a, a blast to work with you know Max is very humble and he loves his fans and he's he's just a great person um, well having seen him in Dancing with the Stars all these years and uh, especially this year with him winning the mirror ball but you know, you see him in that light, and and to see him in this video. Initially, when I saw the video, before I even knew that he he was cast in the video, I thought, man, that looks like Max. And then as he, you know, as the video went on, I was like, oh my gosh, it is. And it was so neat to kind of see him in a completely different light, apart from Dancing with the Stars. Of course, there at the end, it was nice to see his footwork, you know. But it was it was really cool the way that was added in, and he was just such a nice compliment to that. But from your standpoint, was this the first video that you had ever made? Yes. And uh, I wanted to throw in Max had never rode a horse before, and he doesn't ride one in the the actual video, but he's always kind of had a fear of horses. Mm -hmm. And I taught him how I I put him on his first horse he has ever rode right there, you know, on the ranch. So he was all excited about that. So, uh, you well, know, see, you helped him accomplish different. something, you know, with your <laughs> equestrian uh, experience and uh, marksmanship there. I mean, you helped him overcome a fear that that just like those kids. I mean, <laughs> who knew? You know. Now, do you and do you and Max stay in? T- have you been in touch since you wrapped the video and and it's come out? Yes. Yeah, that's we awesome. Follow each other every now and then. Yeah, that's cool. Well, how how was the experience for you personally in making the video? Because that is, it was very well done. I thought you did a tremendous job in it. And uh, but you know that is, as I talked to so many different artists who who venture down making the videos to go along with their songs, that you know it is such a different experience from just being in the studio recording a record. Um, what was it like for you personally? Well. Dave West uh, had such a tremendous energy going on there that he really helped, you know, all of us just really get into it. And because, um, uh, you know, you worry about the choreographer the, the or how you look, your presence, and if you're really in the song. And 
So, you know, I just really had to learn to let go and kind to kind of um, because you don't know how you look until you actually see it later on mm-hmm. video. So you really just kind of have over, I guess, exaggerate your moves and try to really let go. And, you know, it was a, it was a day of learning. But like I said, Dave had such a tremendous energy there going on through the filming that it really helped everybody. And, and we really all got into it, just had a blast. And it, it turned, I thought it turned out great. Oh, it did indeed. I love that. It's one of my favorite videos. And we actually, we have a video channel on our website of all of our country indies that we've interviewed or we're promoting the music for. And, and I had to add it to it. It was just too good for people not mm-hmm. to see it. it. You know, Maxim aside or Max aside, it, it really was well done. And I love the story that goes along with the song. And that's one thing that I love about videos anyway is, is the magic, the magical way that it can tell a story. And, mm-hmm. you know, apart from from what can be pervade in a song and um and so it was just wonderfully done and so um just really really good all the way around congratulations on that by the way thank you now you um you also are currently working on your first full length album um which is due out a little bit later in the year talk a little bit about how that's going well it's been a long process and uh, I went through around 4,000 songs to to get these um, it's a very tedious process but I wanted to make sure that it represented me and um, I wanted you know the best songs um, I chose to to not miss, to, to not go with songs that I wrote this time around but Mm-hmm. from professional songwriters to make sure that everything was just on the best level that it could possibly be on. And um, the songs still represent my heart. What I what I feel is, you know, that has that magical feeling that makes people want to, you know, roll down the window when they're driving down the road and just really – you know, just listen to music and, and, and just drift away in it. And it uh, makes you want to turn up your radio, you know. If, if, oh, yeah. If it's not a song good enough to make you want to just turn it up and just drive down that road, then the song's not good enough to make. So, I, know, I know the feeling. Um, I know the feeling. It, it That is really what music should always be about, is is mm-hmm. invoking that, that feeling of just wanting to, just let go and cruise along and just get into the music and, and enjoy it for all it's worth, you know, and that, that's really, I think always what music has done for me. Um, it helps me on the worst of days and it's great on the best of days. You know, it's, it's always, it's always going to fit the moment, no matter what it is. And um, well, that's, that was what, one thing I was going to compliment you on is, is having listened to some of your music. It, I love the fact that you really have, you know, a real, I don't know, you have kind of a, a traditional sound to your music, which I love because in in the wave of country music being what it is today and it's it's kind of, you know, appealing to a younger audience, it's, it's nice to have someone like yourself who is still staying true to who you are as an artist, but also as country music as a whole, which I think, you know, that is the one staple of country music that is always going to remain no matter how it evolves and changes. Mhm. Right. Yeah, and and some of your um you know just the sound of your music as I listen to it, I know that some of your earliest influences, you know, are George Strait and Don Williams and Jim Reeves and gosh, I mean it just doesn't get any better than some of those. And you can definitely hear how much of an impact those artists have had on you personally, but do you have others um, that have also had an impact on you? Well, of course, Keith Urban, you know, he's, he's Mm -hmm. very passionate about his music. I just um, respect him very much. He's very professional and, and and to the level of how he takes his music. And um, so, yes, he's, he's been a huge influence. 
Oh yeah, he he's an awesome artist and songwriter, and uh, I tell you, Keith is he's a legend in his own right, you know, mm-hmm. and um, definitely. And <laughs> now um, I know earlier in your career you had you had actually landed a record deal with Warner Brothers Music, and of course, you know, through um, you know unfortunate circumstances that had to kind of be abandoned and. Is there any opportunity maybe now that you're kind of resurrecting your music career and you're working on this first album, is there a chance that maybe you and Warner Brothers may be able to put something together, you know, down the road? Things have changed so much, you know, since the Internet's come about with record labels. They, You know, back then they took more on as far as artist development and um taking care of the artist financially um, since internet has came along and uh, the record labels have really changed. They, it's not as easy to, to you know, to get that. There is artists now are more having to do things on their own. It makes mm. it hard, but yeah, it's definitely more of a chance to, for the artists to, if they can get things going, to you know, to be able to have more of a profit for the artist, mm-hmm, and still mm-hmm. the record label getting getting it all, you know. So oh yeah, um, it, it's been a lot more challenge to figure it out because you're stuck with kind of having to do it on your own. It takes so many people to make this work. I mean, like when you open a CD and you read all the thank yous, you know that that the artist. Or thinking, I mean, there's like 50 people in there. It just takes so many people to get this going, and, and uh, it's it's just a very challenging. Uh, this is probably one of the most challenging things a person can can do. So, yeah. Um, well, and when I was the grind zone. Well, and, and but you're doing such a great job. I mean, you're a phenomenal artist, and and you did hit on a couple of things there, and that is. You know, the Internet has kind of been a blessing and a curse almost for a lot of artists. I know I've I've interviewed many indie artists from different genres, and a lot of them, their position now is kind of like what you said, is that, you know, doing it independently, you're able to put a little bit more money profit-wise in your pocket than before when you're on a major record label. But the other aspect that I've, I've found is that a lot of artists, independent artists, are saying that, you know, by not – some of them have the attitude or the position that they prefer not to sign with a record label because, you know, they – they don't want their creative sense to be stifled in any way, and they don't want to get right. boxed in, especially when they can do pretty much what they want. And the ability to market their music now is, is unlike ever before with all the different social yeah. mediums. So it really does give you know unsigned artists a real advantage that otherwise 10, 15 years ago, you, know, you would have never – it would have been unthinkable almost. Um, Correct. So there's, there's a lot to be said for that, but it does, I think – you know, tend to make it a little bit harder to to be heard and to be known. But that's where I th- I see it all the time. I mean, just I'll just be honest. I mean, as as I was promoting the interview for tonight over the last week or so, you're you've got fans. Believe me. I mean, they they were just been retweeting and and letting people know that you were going to be on the show tonight. And fans really are making that huge difference now. As unlike ever before, I mean, fans are playing a bigger role, I think, in an artist's success and their career than they ever have in the past. You know, that goes far beyond the record sale aspect. Right. right. I tell you, I'm just very grateful, and uh, it 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 humbles me to, you know, for people to take the time to to help and to, you know to reach out to take that extra few minutes to, to do something. It's it just it means so much, and um, I just want them to realize that and uh, thank, thank every one of them. Oh, yeah. That, well, I will tell you that there are fans listening live tonight. We've um, got our chat room open, and, and it's just full of fans. So um, they are listening to you talk to me on air. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, so now I know, uh, aside from the album that's going to be coming out a little bit later this year, you're also going to be headlining a benefit show in your hometown in Texas um, in October. Talk yes. a little bit about that. What What's the date Very of that? About that. Um, you know, I don't I don't have that date in front of me. I believe it was. I hate to tell you right off. I, that's okay. Um, you caught me at a. I, oh. I'm sorry. Off guard there, but I I I know this is the first part of October. Um, But it's something I'm very excited about. It's, it's, you know, in my hometown, and we're going to have it at the football field there. And um, so we're we're just excited about building that up and letting everybody know. And uh, the boy that is far is. Riley Sproul, and you, you can you can go to uh, you know find him on his, his fan page, mm-hmm. um, and he's he's just an incredible boy, young man. He's a senior in high school there in Van Alstine this year, and he's just very encouraging, and in his recovery, and uh, he, he just you know he makes you want to just like those kids out there. He just encourages you to see what can be done with the right attitude. You know, there's oh, some yeah. amazing things that people can overcome mm-hmm. and challenges in life. And just to see that his, his attitude and the way he handles, you know, his injury and, and what he's going through in life. I mean, people come up against some amazing, tough obstacles and they don't give up and it changes people's lives. Oh yeah. And so he, he's a blessing. You know. So very, very excited about that. And and over the span of your career, how often have you gotten the opportunity to go back to your hometown and perform? Is this one um, of these rare moments? Um, yeah. Yeah, this is probably the, um, one of those rare times. It's been a, it's been a while, and so it's going to be good to see everybody, uh, have everybody come together as a community for this. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, every, lots of people knew me back when I grew up there because I grew up singing and I sang all over that area. And so, you know, they're coming back at a different time to see, you know, me me follow my dream how far I've mm-hmm. come, and, and I'm just thankful that they'll, uh, you know, they're willing to have me. And the community is very supportive. It's amazing. It's an amazing community. You know, when you have a small town atmosphere and everybody just, everybody kind of knows everybody, and you just, it's very supportive, and it's just a very encouraging, you know, in, environment. Yeah, it really is. And there's uh, the town I live in is is small, and it's it's like that. I mean, you just have that. There's nothing better than the camaraderie. And and you know, when you say football stadium, I'm I'm. I'm chomping at the bit now. I can't wait for high school football season to start. It's one of the most exciting times of the year. So to have you go back to your hometown and perform a benefit show for a young man who has already encouraged and inspired so many, but to have you go home, you know, and see so many of the people that you grew up around, um, I can't imagine how excited they must be to have you returning to do this and what an honor for them. Um, So it, it sounds like it's going to be a great time. And uh, it, the town, you know, small towns tend to come out in droves. I mean, things like this bring small towns together like nothing else will. So I have no doubt it's going to be a huge success. Well, thank you. Well, Stacy, I tell you, it, it, you've you've got an amazing career. I mean, you've always had an amazing career no matter what you've you've been doing. But it's so exciting to know that you are back in the music you're you're working on this this album that's going to be out which we cannot wait and uh and by the way i meant to ask you a moment ago is it, till your boots um are dirty is that actually going to be on the album when it's released yes mm-hmm. okay great great well we are we're excited and we look forward to the album coming out and want to wish you the best of luck as you go forward in everything that you do and of course Anything we can do to help promote your music or you and your endeavors, we're happy to do that for you. Thank you so much. 
Well, thank you, and God bless you, and uh, enjoy the benefit. I wish I, I lived closer. I would be there myself, um, but I know it's going gonna, it's gonna to be wonderful, and those folks will certainly uh, enjoy it as well. Well, I should sure appreciate it. All right. Well, take care, and uh, we will be in touch with you again, I'm sure, very soon. All right. God bless you, too. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh, we've been speaking with Stacy Burke, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, what a gentleman. He is, you know, he's described as a cowboy, uh, kind of a modern-day cowboy, and I love, I could sit and talk to him all day. I love his voice, um, but he's an f- amazing singer, songwriter, an artist. I mean, he's just I just love the fact that he's so true to the country roots, and he stays true to that, and he stays true to who he is. You know, some people that have been in music, and they, they kind of leave the music scene for a while, and they come back. They try to reinvent the wheel apart from what they used to be. Stacy Burke is the real deal. And uh, and so I know many of you out there listening to this are huge fans, and uh, – and I'm a new fan, actually, so I'm I'm really enjoying his music, and I cannot wait for the album to come out. And rest assured, we will be featuring it here on our show once that drops. So please, you know, hang in there uh, to get notice of that. And if you're not already following Stacy on social media, but you would like to, I'm going to go ahead and give you all of his information now. You can visit his website at StacyBurkeMusic.com, and there you'll get all the news and information about his upcoming tour, his, his music, um, his album when it comes out, and everything else. There's even a an area for fans that can go and, and um, check out everything there. But you can also um, visit him on Twitter, and he is located over at Stacy Burke Music as well. Go follow him on Twitter if you if you aren't already. And also at Stacy Burke Music on Facebook. Go like his page, and that way. Um, but most importantly, he is an independent artist. He does not have a major record label backing him. So everything he's doing, you know, is is solely funded by the support he gets from the you know the music he does sell. Currently, his single "Till Your Boots Are Dirty," which you're going to hear just in just a few moments, is available on iTunes and Amazon. So just go over there and pick that up. Add it to your collection. It is one you'll want to listen to again and again. And I must tell you, if you if not seen the video to the song, if you are a Stacey Burke fan or you're a Max from Dance with the Stars fan, you need to go watch the video. The video is awesome, and uh, definitely um, you'll get to see Max do a little bit of his famous footwork in it. So it's it's a great story to the song, and it's just a, a great all-around video. So again, we want to thank Stacey Burke for being our special guest this evening. And as we close our show, we are going to play uh, two songs from him, Till Your Boots Are Dirty, which will be on the new album when it's released uh, in the fall. And also we're going to play Mix a Little. So many, many thanks to all of you for joining us this evening. And, uh, again, if you're brand new, we hope this won't be your last time here. We're here Monday through Thursday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern and um, with a different guest. And we also do a Saturday night music show featuring Stacy's music and a lot more music from independent country artists. So please check us out over at Spreaker.com. Just look for Rockin' Country Radio and follow our show, and, and you'll be able to stay up with when we are going to be live over there. And um, so... Wishing you all a wonderful evening. Many thanks again to Stacy Burke, and uh, hope you have a great night. Be safe if the storms are in your way, and uh, we will be back here again tomorrow night, same time, same place, 7.30 p.m. Eastern. Take care for Rockin' Country Radio. I'm your host, DJ Delta Dawn, signing off and wishing you all a good night.
out Rockin' Country Radio on the web. Find us at rockincountryradio.com, on Twitter at rockin underscore C-T-R-Y, and on Facebook at Rockin' Country Radio. 